Welcome to Week in Geek, your new comic preview for July 13th. I'm Mike Ortiz. And I'm the Chris Brown. So what do you got this week? Well, I, I feel like uh, I don't even know that we need to be here anymore. We can just almost run reruns. Yeah. Just in fake the whole thing because yeah. uh, I'm becoming predictable. Um, starting out this week with uh, FF number six. Great cover on this one, too. Awesome cover. Look at that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Bolt's back. Uh, mm -hmm. Awesome. Really, really excited about it. As you all know, this is one of my absolute favorite books every single month. I really enjoy reading this one. I think there is not a single better writer right now than Jonathan Hickman. Um, he's telling so many great stories that I'm really, really liking to read. Um, yeah, and I'm curious where all this is, is going from that last issue, you know? I mean, things are ramping up, and, you know, the bad reads or, well, the multiple Earth reads are coming in. and Council of Reads or whatever they're called. Oh, man, just awesome, awesome stuff. And then now Black Bolt's back. Mm -hmm. So really, really excited about that. Um, you, yet again, we can just uh, cut and paste here with all my previous stuff. Uh, Flashpoint. Hey, Flashpoint. Flashpoint. Flashpoint Citizen Cold. Uh, I really, really liked that book last time around. Uh, that first issue I thought was fun. He's the bad guy who's the hero, who's kind of a jerk, and but he's got this past. So he's still the bad guy, even though he's kind of doing the right thing most of the time. Um, let's see how it shakes out. Flashpoint's been great. Looks like we got the, uh, the was that the Pied Piper this time around, too, on the cover there. So mm -hmm. should be cool. Um, then we've got uh, Deathstroke and the Curse of the Ravager, which was my favorite so far. They have pirates. You know, Deathstroke doing the pirate thing, looking for his daughter Rose, uh, some battles on the high seas. We got Aquaman in this one. Should be, should be pretty fun and pretty cool. Um, issue two of Emperor Aquaman. I really think the Aquaman and the Wonder Woman did a nice job of, of tying everything together from the backstory that was set up in Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. We know what the world is, they, they told us, but if you read those other books, it does a really nice job of fleshing it out. So many of these, excuse me, so many of these other summer crossovers, it feels like the extra books are just trying to make you buy extra books. Mm -hmm. But I'm enjoying these flashpoints because you don't even have to be into DC. You just read them and they're fun. It doesn't have anything to do with anything, you know, other than the story at hand. And a good story, as we've said before, a good story is a good story. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got Frankenstein, Creatures of the Unknown. Um, you know, we were always saying good things about Jeff Lemire, and I think he's a great writer. I love Frankenstein. We got a creature from the Black Lagoon on the first page. Wow. That's, hey, I'm in. I'm in. Love it. I, obviously, anyone who knows me knows I love monsters. Uh, then Amazing Spider-Man. Um, book's been pretty good. I'm a little, a little behind, but uh, the book, for the most part, has been pretty good since Dan Slott took over. We're, we're building up, uh, you know, infested the road to Spider Island, mm -hmm. and in two weeks... They have that Amazing Spider-Man 666 that we've been talking mm -hmm. so much about, which uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that. That yeah. should uh, be real fun. But 665, yeah, uh, Spider-Man's been good. Check that one out. Um, sticking with our Spider-Man, uh, Fear Itself Spider-Man. I feel like I've been going, you know, the whole uh, uh, Flashpoint, Fear Itself, Flashpoint, Fear Itself. Uh, Fear Itself Spider-Man. Uh, this is issue three of three. Um, this book's been, you know, pretty fun, but it's... Like I was saying, it's just things that they're trying to tie in, you know, and they're trying to tie it in and make it seem pertinent. Yes, there's been other things that seem to tie in, but basically the other books seem to have more Fear Itself story than the Fear Itself book. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, these little three-issue miniseries, they're okay. It's fun. It's Spider-Man. I'm enjoying it based on that. Um, then we got uh, New Avengers, which is a Fear Itself tie-in. Mm -hmm. New Avengers has just been good. Uh, I think it's really cool. Looks like the same creature here. Is that the thing? It's the thing. Um, so he's fighting Spider-Man in the previous the issue thing too. Famous hammer. So uh, that should be uh, should be pretty cool. Um, I, I like New Avengers. I think it's been fun. Uh, the last couple issues have been really talky. You know, they're telling you what's going on. Like basically, it's like an interview after the fact of, hey, what happened? Right. And it's just people telling the story and, and a lot of talking heads. Um, yeah, but no David Byrne. Yeah. <laughs> but Bendis is good at that. Same as it ever was. This is not your beautiful wife. This is not even your beautiful crossover. No. Uh, Journey into Mystery, uh, number 625. I like this book. I really like this book. I think it's uh, been fun. I like what's going on with Loki. I like now that he kind of has his old self in the form of a bird that mm -hmm. tells him to do bad things. Uh, that's kind of fun. Uh, just, a, just a really, really good book. And we've you know, said lots of good things about Karen Gillan yep. and the things he's done on other things. Uh, great stuff. Now getting into our creator-owned corner, Razzle. 
Love this book. It's weird. It's Jeff Smith, art, interdimensional art thief. A lot of strangeness. Uh, you know, all the stuff they had with Tesla. Yeah. You know, Tesla keeps kind of coming back in. The art's incredible. Yeah. And while the story's weird, I really like it, and I am look very, very much looking forward to uh, reading them all together. Yeah. Just sitting down and just reading the whole thing because uh, three months in between issues. Yeah, it's hard to remember what's going on. It is, and it's not because the story isn't getting the job done. It's because there's three months in between issues. Yeah. And, you know, I'm uh, more feeble than I used to be. Um, next up, we've got American Vampire, Survival of the Fittest, number two. This story was pretty good. I liked this, and, I, you know, it's supposed to, you were saying last time, it's going to fit into mm-hmm. where you know, the previous, uh, or what the regular ongoing is going right. doing. It's fitting into the same time. And it's it's good. I really like this book. It's, you know, still written by Scott Snyder. It's not one of those extra mini-series that they're trying to tack mm-hmm. on with another writer. So it's, if you're liking American Vampire, this is canon. This is what's what's going on. And it's good. Then we got uh, Unwritten, number 27. I, I really like this book. It's got uh, just a great literary adventure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's diving through books and, and doing all oh it looks like we got a little little pulpy stuff going on yeah. in this issue. So that's that's kinda cool. I, I like that. That's neat. So unwritten if you if you like uh, literature and you like that sort of stuff and you like Harry Potter and mm. you liked uh, what was that other thing? Inkheart. Unwritten could be the uh, book for you. It's Good a really stuff. really solid book and uh, you know we've we've been getting some revelations about uh, who and what uh, Tommy yep. really is uh, so you know it, it's it's been a little while and now it's finally starting to pay off and he's doing a great job of paying it off too yeah. and great artwork too yeah oh yeah adds really, Peter really, Gross right yeah, Peter really Gross and completely oh, it's Vince, fits the story it's like Vince Locke did some inks on this oh, wow. is it Vince Locke a local guy I don't know he did, did a lot of stuff for Calvary. he did Dead World I know I know so. Gary Reed knows him real well and he's you know worked with him before so and he will be a fanfare so what do you what do you got in your stack there? Well, I'm uh, I'm starting out with Batman: The Dark Knight number three. This is the one by David Finch, the uh, very delayed uh, number three. I, I picked this this book up initially just kind of on a lark. I mean, I like Finch. I didn't think his style would fit Batman. I was quite surprised to find mm-hmm. that I actually do like the uh, the grittiness of his style. Uh, you okay. know, he's writing this book. He it turns out he's a better writer than I thought. Uh, it's nothing that's going to blow you away. If he was writing it, someone else was drawing it. I don't know if I'd still pick it up, but the combination of the two uh, has been reasonably solid. If uh, although it has been hurt by the delays, because I don't know what's going on. It's only the third issue, and uh, and already we're running way way behind. Uh, but it's a good. There's a there's a deadline too. Yeah, there's a there's a gr- it's they a, solicited five issues. A gritty super. Yeah, but I think this is the last one. Yeah, I thought they said they were going to cram the others out. Oh, I thought this was the last one before the reboot. I okay. Let me see if yeah, it, it says should be, we're not to be continued or not. It does say to be continued, so. Or they may just renumber it and keep the story going. Who knows? Uh, on the other end of the Batman spectrum is Detective Comics, uh, another Scott Snyder. And uh, this this has been a great, uh, great story. Um, they're really doing a lot with Jim Gordon. Uh, I think right. it's it's interesting that they're they're really taking the detective part of the title very literally. Uh, it, it has been more about the mysteries that are going on. Uh, and there's been a lot of focus on Jim Gordon, which is good, because he's okay. a great character. And uh, there were some, some interesting revelations last issue that uh, will definitely have an impact on Gordon in the future. Um, Snyder's leaving this book to switch over to Batman. Okay. Uh, and, and instead of these very noir art style, uh, it's going to be Greg Capullo, so I think that's gonna be the new superhero-ish one. Uh, so I'll miss this style. Uh, but it's been great. It's going to make a great uh, trade paperback or hardcover. So if you haven't been picking it up and you want to wait for that, it'll probably be really nice. Next up is Ultimate Fallout. This is the continuation of the death of Spider-Man. Obviously, this is the fallout uh, from his death. Uh, it it right. looks like it's got Mark Bagley uh, doing the artwork. I think there's going to be a few other artists. Uh, ben, Root, Bendis is writing. Bendis is writing it. Uh, this is basically just Ultimate Spider-Man. Kind of, but this is going to be the bridge between the old Ultimate right. Spider-Man and the new one. The new kid's supposed to appear in issue four. Yeah, so uh, that that's where we'll find out uh, that the the Ben Riley character that they had introduced is taking over. That's one of the rumors. I think it's a good rumor. Yeah. Well, I've also heard they're going to make it a kid named Miguel O'Hara. Yeah. I, 
Which they could, because they can do whatever they want. It's an yeah. alternate universe. And but uh, the, I would almost like that better than Ben Riley. Well, I think the, Ben Riley would be a cop. What out, gives the Ben Riley thing is it actually is an interesting callback, and the Ben Riley character is black. Oh, and is he? In the Ultimate Universe, he's not a clone. He's just a guy named Ben Riley. Oh, really? All right. So that that gives them a little uh, a little racial diversity in the Ultimate line. Uh, next up, uh, Ultimate Avengers versus New Ultimates. Uh, this has not been a terribly good book. I picked it up because it is a crossover with the ultimate death of Spider-Man, but it's it's barely connected. Uh, basically, the two stories cross when the Punisher shoots Spider-Man, and other than that, it's just uh, it's just a, another Mark Miller Avengers book. Um, there's a not not bad, but you know this this kind of style of Avengers uh, was very oh. Year two thousand five, maybe. It's uh, so oh five. It's so oh five, but uh, it's it's. I think this is Miller's last mainstream superhero stuff, and uh, and you can see yeah, that we the should be so lucky. You can see it's not there, but it's the last issue. And, well, we uh, can't turn it into a movie. Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> he doesn't want to do that stuff anymore. If he can't turn it into a movie. Although I think this is uh, this is the reason why uh, Superior is late because Lionel Francis Yu was busy doing this. Uh -huh. Next up is Booster Gold. Uh, I know I, I have not been getting a lot of Flashpoint tie-ins. I've been picking this up because I like Booster. I like uh, Dan Jurgens. It's a um, great cover. This is, yeah, great sort of a riff on a Superman cover. Yeah. Uh, this has been pretty interesting so far. Booster remembers the old universe, and, uh, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. Whether or not this yeah. is going to have any real impact, who knows. But uh, it's, it's kind of fun and watching him fight Doomsday and uh, Captain Adam. But in the Flashpoint universe, he is—he never became Captain Adam. He's still Nathaniel Adam, but he's right. actually controlling Doomsday. So it's—it's it's kind of interesting. Uh, next up, uh, X Men Schism. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of Jason Aaron. Um, I've read some of his mainstream work, and it's been decent, but not particularly memorable. Okay. Um, I've heard great things about you know Wonder or his uh, Wolverine stuff but uh, left me kind of lukewarm, as did his Ghost Rider stuff. Uh, but this has artwork by Carlos Pacheco. That's yeah. why I'm buying it. Uh, you know, Stan Lee could be writing this, and uh, and I'd still buy it. Um, although it looks like it's not the best Pacheco. It's not like a shot at Stan Lee. It is a shot at Stan Lee. <laughs> uh, next up, Incredible Hulks. This one's for you, Michael. This one. This, this one's is for you, it. Michael Diskin. This is your favorite part of the show. This is uh, this is nearing the end. We got the Hulk fighting a bunch of big dudes, which is pretty cool. Well, but uh, yeah, fighting big dudes. we're uh, we're marching. What's that on the cover? Is that? It almost looks like he's dressed like Thor or something. But the way his yeah, veins are drawn, it almost looks like a gorilla. It's some guy. It's an alien from the Peter David run. Ah, I was uh, hoping it was a gorilla dressed like Thor. No, it's not. Thor. That would have been in. It's not Thorilla. <laughs> but uh, so you is know, there a character called Thorilla? There should be. There should be. Somebody out there make a Thorilla. Get on it. Uh, next up, Alpha Flight uh, number two of eight. Uh, this is a Fear Itself crossover. I wasn't yeah. going to get any any of the Fear Itself stuff. I actually may not have started this if I knew it was going to be Fear Itself. The point one was not listed as that. Okay. I read that. It was pretty good. The issue one, it was pretty good. Uh, I've always liked Alpha Flight, or at least, you know, yeah. it's in its original incarnation. Uh, you're a John Byrne nerd. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, uh, Van Lente and Pack and Eagle Shim are doing a good job of okay. bringing it back to that Alpha Flight. I mean, it's gone through the, that team has gone through the ringer over the years. But yes, this, they have. pretty much, if you, if you have a basic understanding of what's been going on, they all died, they all came back, and it's sort of a clean, fresh start. Uh, next up is uh, Green Lantern number 67 and uh, Green Lantern Core 61. Uh, these are the the end and I think the epilogue of the War of the Green Lanterns. I believe so. Yeah, uh, that Green Lantern is the last piece. Yeah, Green Lan uh, the Green Lantern Emerald Warriors that shipped like a week ago or two weeks ago actually shipped early. These books were both delayed. Uh, so we're going to get finally see the end. Oh, my. I kind of saw cheat. that. I don't want to cheat. He's cheating. Uh, there's a, Cheater. there's a, there's a, looks like, looks like something happens in here that a lot of people saw coming, just to be completely honest. Um, interesting. Holy sh. Well, stop doing that! Anyway, 
apparently things are not going to be what, what, what they seem uh, when all is said and done with this new reboot. Uh, so yeah, these are finishing up this storyline, finishing up Green Lantern before the reboot. Uh, good stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's your top? My top pick, surprise, surprise, we got a new book, a uh, new creator on title coming out from Image. First in quite a while. Quite a while by uh, our man Jonathan Hickman. Got a book here called The, the Red Wing. And it's supposed to be from his solicits. It's kind of a superhero book, but it also looks like it's got like a military space aspect mm -hmm. to it. So it, the, the artwork looks really clean and fantastic. Um, Jonathan Hickman tells a great story. He tells mm -hmm. a great high concept story. I am extremely excited to read this. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, you know, there's the, the guy has never let me down, and I don't expect he's going to start now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, too. Yeah, this I, and that seems like a lot of guys. You know, When that mm -hmm. first book was first solicited, I had a lot of guys saying that they wanted to pick it up. Now, granted, we live here in Detroit, and I think some of the nerds want it just because it's titled Red Wing. <laughs> and you know what? And honestly, I, I, I'm getting to the point with how our local hockey fans, the way I was with uh, Sandman. It was never that I didn't want to read Sandman or didn't like Sandman. I didn't like the people who read it. And I'm starting to get that way with the Red Wings fans. <laughs> no offense, guys. I love you most of the time. Um... But, uh, but yeah, this Jonathan Hickman book, I, I think it's going to be a, a great, fun book. And it is the, had I time uh, today, I would have read it before we did the show. Mm -hmm. But uh, things got away from me, so I'm going to be reading this right away when I get home. Really looking forward to it. What do you, what do you got there? Uh, well, my, my top pick, uh, the one I'm most looking forward to, actually it would have been Red Wing, but he already picked that one and he goes first. I hog the Jonathan Hickman stuff. Um, I, it's what I do. But uh, I'm going with Captain America number one. Uh, it's Ed Brubaker and Steve McNiven. I mean, you can't really get McNiven's a better McNiven's always great. Uh, this is a relaunch, uh, certainly in Fear Itself. Captain or Steve Rogers took back the shield and took back the mantle right. of Captain America. So this is uh, this is basically him back. Uh, the first time he's been the, the star of the book since he died. Um, they, they pretty much let the, uh, the other book finish out with Bucky, and now that's going to turn into... Captain America and Bucky. And Brubaker's uh, still writing, right? Yeah, and that, but that's going to flat be uh, old stories. Okay, that's, that's gonna cool. That's going to be a flashback though. to World War II, which is a great idea. Yeah. So like this it. is basically, this is the Captain America series. They just gave it a new number one because the movie's coming out in a couple of weeks, much like they right. did with Thor. Um, this makes a lot more sense. The Thor, it was was just... Just a, to get a number one. Just to get a number one. This is Steve Rogers returning to the role. It makes more sense. Uh, Brew Baker's done a great job. I think yeah. uh, McNiven is a fantastic artist. I agree. I know that we're not going to get six months in a row of this. I don't care what Marvel says, but as long as we get six of them in a row before he moves on to something else, I'll be happy. Um, great, big, classic superhero y stuff. Uh, McNiven, if you have any question about how well Steve McNiven draws Captain America, go read the first issue of Civil War again. Yeah. And, uh, and you'll see that, that it's, it's just absolutely phenomenal stuff. So uh, between the movie, between the character, between uh, the, the great creative team on it, and because you already took Red Wing, uh, I'm going to go with Captain America number one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one as well. Yep. So, yeah, and I believe uh, with that, that is your Week in Geek.